Welcome to the 3M Tech web webinar on problematic plastic. Before we start, I'd briefly like to introduce uh, 3M IETD and myself for any of you who've not met either me or the groups before. So here at 3M, we offer a wide range of adhesive and tape products that enable our customers to design the perfect engineering solution. Technologies encompass liquid, spray and tape adhesives, single-sided speciality tape, masking, packaging solutions, um, also label materials and fasteners. Relevant applications cover the broadest possible spectrum, examples being structural glazing, signage, component assembly, through to composite bonding and modular build. And as for me, I'm a chemist by training, uh, but don't worry, this isn't going to be a chemistry lesson. Um, I joined 3M as an analytical chemist back in 2002, uh, sorry, 2003 even, uh, where I worked as a troubleshooter for issues with any of the 3M range of products. So that was anything from medical to industrial, uh, personal protective equipment through to electronics. I made the move to the tapes and adhesives business in 2007, uh, where I've specialised in the adhesive side of the portfolio. And today I'm going to be covering three main areas. Um, first we'll start with a brief setting of the scene. So why are we talking about plastics and why tapes and adhesives? Then, as the title suggests, we'll, um, it's not always plain sailing when we're bonding plastic. So we'll discuss some of the com common problems surrounding plastic bonding. And finally, I'll talk to you about the options available to overcome the problems. So let's get started. So why are we talking about plastics today? Well, in these tough economic times, it seems that there isn't a week that goes by uh, where the rising cost of goods, energy, fuel, um, don't make it into the news. So while at home you might be reviewing whether to switch to supermarket owned brands to conserve some cash, um, in industry we're also looking for ways to, to, to reduce costs. So for example, many detergent manufacturers are producing concentrated versions of their products, which helps them reduce transport costs. Food manufacturers moving from glass jars to plastic packets for the same reason. But in industry, manufacturers are increasingly assessing manufacturing processes to introduce lower, weight, sorry, lower weight materials, um, as in the supermarket example, uh, looking at making changes to processes to improve efficiency, um, and maybe looking at replacing high cost raw materials with lower cost alternatives. This can mean a switch from a metal to um, a plastic, or even from one plastic to a lower cost one. And to give you a bit of an idea of uh, some of the savings that could be made by doing this kind of thing, um, I've taken some detail from a, a quote we had for some lab test pieces recently. Uh, we were quoted for polypropylene, um, which is a low surface energy plastic, which can, can sometimes cause problems, um, 15 pence each. The aluminium pieces, 51 pence each. Um, so you can see that polypropylene can be a third of the price of some metals. Some of the higher surface energy plastics, polycarbonate, acrylic, PVC, that kind of thing, came in at about 30 pence. So there is quite a big difference in, in prices there. So why are we talking about tapes and adhesives? Well, apart from the obvious that 3M IATD are a tapes and adhesive supplier, um, what are the other reasons that it makes sense to be talking about tapes and adhesives today? We'll start with aesthetics. Improved aesthetics um, can be achieved by using tapes and adhesives. You get an invisible fix, so there's no unsightly mechanical fixings, holes, read through, anything like that. A second reason would be process improvements. There's no need to drill holes to take a mechanical fix. That removes the process steps. And that leads nicely into our third reason for talking about tapes and adhesives today. Time savings. Fewer processes or fewer process steps save time. Tape solutions can give an instant bond and finishing and rework processes such as grinding, polishing, that kind of thing. Another reason we'd look at tapes and adhesives would be sealing. Because you've not drilled a hole for a mechanical fix, you haven't introduced a new leak pass for moisture, uh, and by picking certain adhesives, you can actually use them to seal the joint at the same time that you're bonding. Performance is another reason. Uh, tapes and adhesives can distribute stress over a bond line rather than concentrating it and mechanical fixing. 
This allows greater design freedom and potential to use a lower gauge material, which could potentially reduce your transportation costs for your final finished goods. <coughs> Excuse me. And the final one would be vibration damping. Uh, so an adhesive can actually improve the long-term durability of a structure by absorbing vibration stresses, change the final, the final um, properties of your, your material. So I hope this shows how a combination of using a, a tape or an adhesive with a plastic could have a number of be benefits in the current climate. Um, <clears throat> but there are a number of issues that could potentially arise when working with this combination of materials. So we'll move on to talk about those. So as the name of the session suggests, on to the problems associated with bonding plastics. As I run through these, you might like to message us with examples of issues you might have faced in the past. Um, so have you ever had a problem sticking plastics together with a tape or an adhesive? Did it stick initially and then fail later on, or couldn't you get it to stick before? So if you, if you do have any comments on things that you've experienced, you can stick those in the, the chat bar, and Martin will relay those to me in a moment. With these kind of issues, it's very easy to blame the adhesive. Um, but if we understand the issues that the adhesive is facing when it's trying to bond to a surface um, and select the correct type of adhesive to overcome that, we can, we can form some very strong permanent bonds. So what are the common plastic problems? Mold release on the plastic surface is a common one. Um, we generically call this a weak boundary layer. And it's one of the easiest problems in this area that we can resolve. So we can, uh, we, we'll look at that in a moment. Plasticizer migration is another issue that comes up. It's not an issue that's seen initially. You can form a good bond. But over time, the adhesive can soften. And ultimately, the bond may fail. The third area would be low surface energy. So this is where a plastic is behaving like a, a non-stick surface, and nothing seems to want to bond to it. And finally, a, a second type of weak boundary layer. So this, is, this is material that hasn't been added to the surface like a mold release, but is actually blooming from your plastic onto the surface, but again, acting like a weak boundary layer. So Martin, have we had any comments come in? Just looking across. Um, the people are having had problems bonding to ABS and uh, polyethylene. Polyethylene is a classic low surface energy uh, plastic, and so that would fall into the low surface energy category. Um, do we have any others? I've had another one from Simon, and he seems to have problems with labels. The labels that seem to stick well to begin with, but then they often fall off. Which sounds like a, a plasticizer migration issue, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Have any others coming uh, through? Another round around um, things won't stick to some certain types of plastics. So again, that fits with the, the ABS and the polythene, uh, polyethylene uh, side of things. So we're dealing with the low surface energy side of things. So it's sounding like some of you have experienced these problems. Hopefully, someone was able to sort you out with a solution to those. Um, so bonding polycarbonate in clear windows. Okay, so another. Another one around substrates. So hopefully as we move through the, uh, the problems, what they actually are and how to solve them, we'll look at some of the, the, the solutions that um, if you didn't find them at the time, uh, that 3M should be able to help you with in the future if you come across those again. So we'll start with first with the easiest one. And it actually encompasses two of the areas that I mentioned there. I've grouped them together under the title weak boundary layers. The weak boundary layers aren't specific to plastics. The term describes any material that sits on a substrate surface, um, preventing the adhesive making contact and therefore bond to the surface. So in metal, like in this image here, um, this could be a layer of rust, could be a layer of oil, or on any other any surface, it could be dusty or dirty, like the, the, the second image there. In the case of plastics, a weak boundary layer is typically um, either a mold release agent or a material that's bloomed out of the plastic. Um, an adhesive can bond to a weak boundary layer. So it can bond to that rust, it can bond to the, the dirt that's there. Um, but if that layer is not strongly attached to your substrate, the construction is left with a weak point and it's likely to fail at that point. So mold release 
is a thin coating of material that prevents plastic from sticking to the mould when it's formed. And as you can imagine, it's inherently unsticky, and therefore any left on the plastic surface will be responding as well as acting as a weak boundary. You're unlikely to see a mould release agent, but if you touch the surface, it might feel slightly greasy if it is present. Um, common mould release agents are things like silicones carried in a wax or a solvent. The second time of the type of weak boundary layer that we come across with plastics is bloom of additives. Um, they also form an invisible layer that you, you, you won't see on the plastic surface. Uh, plastics are made up of long chains of polymer material, but in amongst those long chains there are also smaller, shorter chains and other additives that fit in with that, those long chains of plastic, things like plasticizers. And in some grades of plastics, these shorter, smaller molecules are loose and can actually balloon to the surface and, and block the bonding process. Both of these problems, as I said, are fairly easy to resolve just by cleaning the surface. But the thing to remember when you're doing that is to use a cleaner that doesn't replace one weak boundary layer with another. Uh, so use an alcohol-based cleaner, something like 3M VHB surface cleaner, rather than products like Terps, which leave an oily residue, which again acts like a weak boundary layer. So we'll move on to the uh, second of our key problems, plasticizers. So I mentioned on the previous slide that they can bloom to a plastic surface, but what are they and why are they a problem? The images here show a rigid plastic window frame and some rolls of plastic back tape. The main ingredient in both of these is PVC. So why are they such different materials? One's rigid, one's flexible. The answer is plasticizers. So I now invite you to um, answer a quick poll that we've uh, put together. Bear with us just a moment and onto the screen to pop um, a question for you. Slight technical glitch, it will be there in any moment, but just asking you which one of those contains the plasticizer. So is it the rigid material or the flexible material? Should be with you any second. Apologies for the slight delay. Now, unfortunately, we're having a bit of a technical glitch at this end. Click on live, and poll is open, brilliant. So on your screen now you should see a quick poll there, so I just invite you to pick which of the two materials, the window frame or the uh, rolls of tape, contains the plasticizer, just to get an idea of, of what, what we all think, which one has the plasticizer in it. So we've got the results coming in, and we've got about a 60-40 split, and wait a couple more seconds, 90% of you have voted, so to give of other people a chance to join. Now I think we've pretty much everybody got an answer in. So what was our result? We can see that we've got a nice split there. Sixty-five percent of you thought the tape was the one that that contained the plasticizer, where it was forty-six thought it was the window frame. I can uh, reveal the results. It's actually the tape. Um, the UPVC or unplasticized PVC window frame is a rigid material, whereas the PVC used in the backing of the vinyl tapes is plasticized. The plasticizer softens the plastic, um, making it more flexible. So PVCs that are flexible contain plasticizer. The rigid material referred to as UPVC or unplasticized PVC is a rigid material. So it's an additive added to materials or added to plastics in order to make them more flexible. The most common materials for plasticizing uh, plastics are a family of chemicals called phthalates. In relation to the chains of molecules that make up the plastic, they're very small and they're able to move around in the plastic structure. And this is what allows them to bloom to the plastic surface. There are no plasticizers outside the plastic, but lots inside. So a diffusion gradient is created and they naturally move to the surface to try and balance out that difference. So why is this a problem? Well, I mentioned that they can move, these plasticizer additives can move around the polymer chain and they can escape the polymer into the air or into the materials in contact with the plastic itself. Adhesives, tapes and adhesives are essentially another type of plastic. 
So they can be prone to attack by these plasticizers. The plasticizer migrates from the plastic into the adhesive, and it has the same effect on the adhesive as it does to the plastic, so it softens it. When it softens, it loses its cohesive strength, the internal strength of the adhesive. And in the worst cases, this can cause the, um, the adhesive to fail completely. All is not lost, though, because adhesives can be engineered to have resistance to plasticizer. So the plasticizer molecules can be blocked from getting in and causing problems. Uh, and I'll discuss that a little bit in a little bit more detail a bit later on in the, the webinar. We'll talk about some special products that are designed to overcome this problem. And you remember that I mentioned that plasticizer migration problems don't manifest themselves immediately. It takes time for the plasticizer to migrate from one material to another. So the bond may seem good to start with, but then deteriorate over a course of weeks or months. So going back to the comment we got earlier about some labels that were failing over time, um, this is likely to be plasticizer related, particularly if the adhesive seems to get kind of stringy. So just a little uh, fact for you there. Um, if you've ever noticed new car smell, um, it's the smell of the, the phthalate plasticizers that are found in many of the plastics in the car. Um, it's that coming out that gives that distinctive smell to, to new cars. It's also the material that can cause a slight fog on the inside of your windscreen, particularly in this warm weather. You might find that you need to clean that inside of the windscreen more regularly, and it's, it's plasticized there in the low molecular weight, the small molecules in the plastics that are actually migrating out in the heat and uh, depositing on other surfaces. So if a plastic is known to or thought to contain plasticizers, um, obviously, you don't want to wait for it to fail in order to determine that there is a plasticizer issue there. Uh, so there are ways of checking whether a material contains plasticizer and whether that's going to be a problem for the combination of your plastic and the adhesive that you're using. So typically, what we would do would be to bond materials together. So you take your plastic, bond it up with your adhesive, and expose it to an aging cycle. Um, typically, that's 50 degrees C for 10 days or if you're needing results a bit quicker, 65 degrees for seven days. And what this does is speed up the process of the plasticizer migrating from one material to the other. Um, and that can that highlights any sorry, potential issues. Um, they can be identified and resolved. So that's plasticizer migration. We'll move now on to the fourth area of, um, of problems that are, are common to experience with plastics. That's low surface energy, or LSE, is the other way you may hear it referred to. The, basic, the most basic requirement for an adhesive to form a bond to a substrate is good contact between two materials. Contact is made when the adhesive wets the surface. So if you think about raindrops falling on two cars, one's waxed, the other's unwaxed. The rain wets the unwaxed car, but remains in little droplets, like in the, the image on the screen, um, and doesn't fully wet the waxed car. In this example, the two cars have different surface energies, and that creates different levels of wetting. The surface energy is a property of a material that determines how well other materials can wet out on the surface. High surface energy materials attract other materials, attract things like adhesives and allow them to make good contact, whereas low surface energy materials like the wax car repel other materials, so in the case of the raindrops, it repel those, prevent them wetting out fully, um, and they don't want to make contact. So next I want to just show you two little movie clips that I hope help to illustrate this effect in a bit more detail. So in the first of these little films, um, a droplet of water is being placed on a surface. Uh, it doesn't wet the surface very well. It prefers to stay as a well-defined droplet. The low surface energy of the surface is repelling the liquid, and the liquid prefers to stay in this defined droplet. In the second movie clip, the surface is much higher, higher energy, so the liquid is attracted to the surface and the droplet collapses in order to make good contact with the surface. Now, if you imagine this effect happening over a much larger scale with an adhesive in place of the water 
and your substrate in place of the surface, you can see how an adhesive has a much easier time making contact and therefore a good bond with a high energy surface. So we now know what wet out looks like, but how can we tell if our substrate is high or low energy? Well, the movie clips were collected using um, a bit of analytical equipment called a goniometer. And the angle that the droplet makes with the surface is used to calculate the surface energy in dimes per centimeter of the material. So this is the kind of equipment a supplier might use to determine the surface energy of their plastic stocks. Uh, for specification purpose, purposes. It's all very well in a lab situation, but it's not always practical if you're running trials with various different raw materials, um, or if you're having problems and you're troubleshooting if an adhesive isn't bonding well to a surface. So a more portable me measurement, a way to, to determine surface energy, is to use a dyne pen. As the name suggests, it's a pen, and it contains an ink that will wet surfaces above a certain surface energy, but not those below it. So a solid line represents a high surface energy surface, whereas a broken, beaded up um, line of ink indicates that it's low surface energy. So you get a pass-fail result rather than a number. Or you could look at a reference table of typical surface energies to give you an indication of how easy or difficult your chosen material might be to bond to. So surface energy values in the hundreds would be considered high. And for these kind of materials like metals and glass, um, they're not really usually associated with uh, low surface energy issues. Values below 38 dimes per centimeter are usually considered low surface energy. So these are your typical non-stick coatings, PTFE or Teflon, um, but polypropylene, polyethylene, two of the cheaper plastics that are available, but also some of the most problematic in terms of, of low surface energy. The medium surface energy um, materials, so in that region between 38 and up into the hundreds, um, generally don't need special measures to achieve a bond, but treatments are sometimes used to further improve bonding. So we've talked about the problems, how we can determine if there may be a problem, but how can we solve the problems? How can we make our plastics easier to stick with, or stick to even? Um, one way would actually be to change our materials. Um, we eliminate the problem. This could be a move to a more stable plasticized product, uh, which releases less material. It could be a move to a higher surface energy plastic, or even a move away from plastics um, completely. Often, this is easier said than done. A change of material can change the final properties of the device that's being constructed. And there can also be some cost implications of changing the material that your component's made out of. So what are the other options we could look at? <clears throat> One option would be to clean and prime your plastic. It's a quick and easy uh, option, but it does introduce an additional process step. And it also introduces solvents into the manufacturing process, which isn't always feasible. Uh, but we'll discuss how priming works in a moment. The second area that we'll discuss in a bit more detail is um, surface treatments such as corona, plasma, and flame treatments. These can be done in-house with investment in treating equipment, or they can be shipped out to a specialist. Uh, but again, you're adding a process step there. And the third option that we'll discuss would be the use of special, ade special adhesives and tape products. So these uh, products like the uh, DT8005 um, range of, of adhesives and they're formulated to overcome some of the plastic problems that we've, um, we've discussed so far. So on to priming and how it actually works. So assuming we're sticking with our original material, excuse the pun there, um, there is something else uh, that we can do. We can use a, a wet chemical treatment um, or a primer layer. And the idea here is to coat the surface in a material that improves its bonding characteristics. So it might increase the surface energy. It might change the topography, give it a more favorable bonding surface. 
or it may be adding um, a particular chemical group that promotes adhesion. An example of this would be the addition of long-chain amines, ammonium salts, or phosphines to promote the bonding of cyanoacrylates uh, to polypropylene and polyethylene. And this is thought to work by these materials diffusing into the plastic surface and initiating the polymerization of the adhesive in this boundary layer between the plastic and the, uh, the adhesive itself. Um, another thing that polymers can do is actually act as a barrier layer to prevent plasticizer migration. It can be quite a simple and effective option uh, for um, increasing the bond or improving the bond to, to, um, to your plastics. Another area you could potentially look at would be surface treatment. So I'll give you a very quick overview of three of the, the most popular or the, the, the uh, most well-known surface treatments that are out there. Corona treatment. Um, so this is a visible electrical discharge. You can actually see in this image here the sort of lightning bolt type um, discharge here attaching to the bottle. Um, and this is occurring when a high voltage, high frequency electrical potential is applied to a small diameter electrode in relatively close proximity to an electrical ground. The resulting electrical charge or discharge um, causes a partial ionization of the surrounding atmosphere and is used for surface modification. So when the corona is directed at a plastic surface, so this bottle in this case, um, it severs some of the chemical bonds at the material surface. The severed bonds then react with groups that are present in the corona um, and leave a high surface energy place, surface energy in place of the uh, the low surface energy one. It's a relatively short-lived technique, so the best results are usually obtained with this when you're corona treating and bonding at the same location. A more long-lasting technique is plasma treating. So this, this can be done as an atmospheric plasma, so under normal atmospheric conditions, or uh, which tends to be very localized, or it can be vacuum plasma, which is more of a batch process um, that can cover larger, larger areas. Thought is a plasma. Um, it's sometimes described as the fourth state of matter, um, and it's an ionized gas. So if you imagine heating a liquid, it's in, in one state of matter, it's liquid. If you provide enough energy in the form of heat, it eventually changes state and becomes a gas. If you do the same thing with a gas and provide enough energy to that, it will become a plasma. The sun is actually a highly energetic ball of plasma. This ball of plasma at the surface, obviously the sun, but the, the plasma treatment at the surface of the plastic both cleans and activates the surface. Um, it produces a, a chemically, chemical state called a free radical, which is very, very high in energy and readily reacts with anything at the plastic surface. And it has a very similar effect to that of corona treatment in that the surface energy is improved. It is, however, longer lasting than a corona treatment. The third type of surface treatment that's commonly used uh, uses the same uh, principle, um, and it's called flame treatment. So as the name suggests, it uses a flame to treat the surface. And the, the distance between the, the web being treated um, and the flame is critical. If you get things too close, you're just going to char the surface of your web or your, um, your piece of plastic. So the aim is to expose the surface to the area surrounding the flame itself. And this is an area where a plasma is created. So the effect is similar to that um, in, in flame treatment. It's similar to that in plasma treatment in that the surface is cleaned and the surface is activated. So there we've talked about a number of processes that you can use to clean and activate the surface for bonding, or in the case of priming, activate, and in some cases block plasticizer migration. But what if you wanted to eliminate these process steps and use a specialized tape or adhesive product? Now I'm going to talk a little bit about using these specialist products. Um, we're going to start with products that are designed for plasticizer resistance. So this top image here is a graphic designed to show you what happens when a plasticizer, um, when plasticizer migration occurs. The grid is representing our plastic. 
The green line is the surface of our plastic. And um, yeah, the grid is the adhesive. The green line is the surface of our plastic. And then the green circles represent our plasticizer molecules. Over time, they move into an area where there are fewer plasticizer molecules into the adhesive, causing it to soften. So how do we prevent this? Well, the first option is to include a barrier to this plasticizer migration. So this might be a primer, as we've mentioned before, or it might be a coating on a tape surface, which doesn't allow plasticizer to move through. The second option would be to use a different tape or adhesive uh, that has been made more resistant to the plasticizer. So in this case here, um, we have these additional, additional lines added to the structure, which are representing a greater degree of cross-linking in our adhesive. And what that does is actually block the path for the plasticizer molecules to move into the adhesive. They'd like to move in there, but there is no space for them to go. And a third option would be to um, load our adhesive with plasticizer. This gets rid of the um, gradient between plasticizer in the plastic and then outside, so that there isn't that desire for the plasticizer to move from one material to another. And 3M have a range of different tapes and adhesives that can cope with plasticizer migration. And they use one or other or a combination of these three different methods in order to make themselves plasticizer resistant. There are also special products for low surface energy substrates. So water forms droplets on a wax carbonate. We've mentioned that before. Uh, but it also wets out on a higher surface energy on wax car. But mercury forms droplets in the majority of surfaces. So why is this? Well, liquids have surface energy too, or surface, energy, surface tension as it's, it's termed. Mercury has a very high surface tension, and it therefore prefers to stay in that droplet form that, that is very familiar to us. It doesn't want to wet the surface. Water is a more medium energy surface tension, so it wets some surfaces but not others. But if we move to a solvent such as IPA, so isopropyl alcohol, the surface tension is lowered and the liquid wets the majority of surfaces. So good wetting is a relationship between a wetting liquid and a wettable surface. A low surface energy material, which has a surface that does not like to be wet, can be married with a highly wetting liquid to get wetting. So low surface energy compatible adhesives use this relationship to get contact with a low surface energy substrate. They really want to wet surfaces, so the fact that the plastic is low surface energy is less problematic for them. It's also possible to add materials to an adhesive to allow it to prime a surface as it bonds. This gives the benefit of removing a process step by combining the priming and bonding steps in, into one. And again, for low surface energy substrates, 3M has uh, products, things like the DP8005 series that I mentioned earlier, which use these different, um, these different processes in order to bond to low surface energy substrates. So just to sum up what we've talked about, we know that the use of plastics and adhesives can offer cost, aesthetic, and process benefits, but we also discussed some of the issues that we need awareness of when working with the, these materials. Surface energy, plasticizer migration, and weak boundary layers. But we know that there are a number of measures that can be undertaken to ensure a successful application. The most simple of those is cleaning a surface. Priming surface treatments are the process steps that can be included. Or there are special, specially formulated products, tapes and adhesives that are able to cope with the problems that we've talked about. 